about our sensory development, now it's important for us to talk about our motor development. So in terms of motor development, again, we're really talking about muscles and movement. And motor development is not just something that happens in the body. It's something that happens in the brain. And a lot of our motor development is our ability of our brain to send the right signals to our muscles and providing us with that sense of coordination. So it is a mental ability as well as a physical ability. Now in motor development, we tend to talk about two distinct areas and that is gross motor and fine motor. So gross motor is the type of motor development that talks about our big muscle groups. So these are moving a whole arm or moving a leg, kicking or throwing or walking or hopping, the big muscle groups. For gross motor skills to develop, we need to see growth in our muscles, we need to see growth in our bones, we also need to see maturation in our inner ear. And that's because at every stage in our development, whether we're lying, whether we're sitting, whether we're crawling, or whether we're standing, our inner ear is in a different perspective to the rest of our body. Our center of gravity is different from laying, sitting, crawling, and standing. And so we have to relearn our sense of balance in a mental way at each of those stages. It's also important to develop a sense of posture or a sense of how to hold yourself to maintain that balance. And even after you obtain some motor skills in some situations, we often have to relearn them when we're in different types of scenarios. Learning something on a flat surface versus learning something on a ramp or on stairs is very different. And learning something on hardwood or carpet or snow or sand is also very different. So because of this, learning gross motor skills takes up a lot of our time in infancy and childhood. By the time we're teenagers, we more often have the main parts of it. But in our infancy, we are captivated by a variety of really cool milestones that show just how much of this changes in the first few years of life. At birth, infants can't really move that much in a voluntary way. One of the very first things they learn to move, and remember we're following the cephalocaudal pattern of development, is they learn to lift their head. By roughly one month of age, an infant may be able to learn lift their head just off their caregiver. If you're cradling them and they, they lift their head up a little bit, that may be uh, the very first milestone they reach. Now, some infants might reach this much earlier or a little bit later. By two months of age, now instead of just lifting their head, they can also lift their head and their chest. So this can happen when they're playing tummy time. The infant in the photo in the slides, a little bit older than two months, but they're in the posture I want you to see. And it's the idea they're now lifting and it's not just their chin that's up, a little bit of their chest is now up as well. And so we're moving down from the head to the chest. The next area we start to get that voluntary strength in as our muscles mature, as our bones grow, and as our coordination comes online is our arms. Now, newborns can certainly swing their limbs, but by three months of age, now they can move their arms in a more intentional and coordinated manner. Such as if a baby is laying on a little gym mat, they can reach their hands up and try and attach those little balls, the little dangly butterflies hanging out in their gym mat. So again, we see from the head to the chest, to the, sho to the shoulders and the arms in the first three months of life. Another big milestone that comes online around four months of age is the ability to sit up with support. A very, very, very newborn infant who's only a month or two months old, if you sit them up against the back of a couch or on someone's lap, even with the support, they will slump over. But by four months of age, if you put them against something that's pretty solid and you offer them support, they can now sit with support. Something they can't do at four months of age, but they can do around six months of age, is sit on their own without support. And this is the idea that with nothing behind them, they're now sitting. A really important milestone to be reached before they can sit on their own is the length of their leg. Their legs must be long enough. We know newborns, their legs are shorter than this doll's legs. And because of that, there's not enough area to balance and sit on their own. If I do it just right, this doll can sit on her own. She has the length in her legs to balance. The next major milestone happens around seven to nine months of age. It has a bit more diversity. And this is the ability to crawl. And so crawling actually usually starts backwards. They get their hands and they get their knees on the ground. And although they'll put their hands forward, they are putting their hands forward and pushing themselves backwards. It's quite cute if you have a house that you can kind of walk around from the kitchen to the living room and you watch an infant and they're trying to go one way and they're actually crawling backwards. Some infants don't crawl at all. Some may creep and creep is different in that their knees are not on the ground, but they're more so sliding with their hands. They're pushing with their hands and their whole leg is on the ground. Some don't crawl or creep. They might scoot on their bum. And this is the idea. They sit on their bum, they put their hands on the ground and they push themselves around. 
or they might roll around. And as we get older, some infants may knee walk. And this is the idea that they're just on their knees and their hands and their torso is up. That may be an intermediate stage to actually walking. There's lots of individual variants and not all infants will crawl. But by about eight to 11 months, we start to see infants being able to stand up with help. And this is the idea, if a caregiver is holding their hands and the infant's feet are on the ground, they can actually stand and, and stand for a few minutes. This can't happen at the earlier months because they just don't have the muscles in their torso and in their tummy to hold themselves up. They will just fall over. So being able to hold their hand and help them stand is a really cool milestone. Then roughly around the same time, you can see my, my, my ages are getting a bit wider because there's more individual variants here, is they can pull themselves up. This is when an infant goes from a sitting or crawling position and they hold onto a chair leg or a coffee table or a couch or a person or a door and they pull themselves from a sitting or crawling position up to a stand. They can't yet walk, once they get up they usually fall, but they're able to climb to a stand. And finally, roughly around 12 months of age, that is the average age that they'll take their first independent steps and walk. Though some may not be walking full time, they may continue to crawl or knee walk for a few months before they transition over to primarily walking. They can take their first steps around 12 months of age. Now after the first year of life, it gets a lot more complicated and we start to do much more complicated things. In the second year of life, any time between the first birthday and the third birthday, we start to master really complex things like hopping. Hopping is the idea that you jump and both feet leave the ground at once. It's really cute to watch a young toddler who understands what hopping is and they think they're hopping and they're bending their knees and springing up, but their feet are not coming off the ground. It's really cute just before they get to hopping. Once they learn to leave the ground, they've mastered hopping. They also start to master stairs in their second year and third year of life. Stairs may start off by scooting down on their bum and crawling up on their hands and knees, but eventually they can start to walk up and down the stairs. And then we also have things like walking backwards. And then there's all kinds of little fast movements like scurrying and skipping and running. Now there's lots of different studies that have found different ages in different cultures and in different places, but just a rough estimate of when these milestones might land are in this slide. You wouldn't need to memorize this slide. This is just for your own understanding, but it's kind of cool to say, you know, hopping on one foot might happen around three or four years of age and going down a slide, kids get really confident doing that around two years of age. Kicking a ball is something we master anytime between 18 months and three years of age. There's all kinds of really cool gross motor movements we do. That being said, gross motor movements are also influenced by our experiences and influenced by our culture. And just as I said, not everybody will crawl. We actually find this huge cultural effect based on how we put infants down on the ground. If we more so put them down and have belly time on the ground and they're down with their belly down, those infants are more likely to crawl. Versus if we put the infants down on their back or on their bum, they're more likely not to spend a lot of time crawling. They might crawl a little bit, but not be big crawlers. They're more likely to learn to scoot and then go right into walking. The ones we put down on their bum and their back might actually walk earlier. We also know gross motor development might be influenced based on how infants are sleeping. If infants are sleeping alone in their own crib, they might use that time to explore more versus if they're co-sleeping with parents and spending more time in parents' arms or spending time swaddled or strapped to the parent's back or in a baby carrier or a swing or a sling, then they are, might be more slow to develop some of these gross motor milestones. There's some cultures where babies spend a significantly more time swaddled on parents' backs, and it doesn't seem to cause any problems in the long term. They reach the milestones slightly later, but they still reach all the milestones okay. In North America, we have noticed a difference between infants who are put down on the floor and can play on the floor or play in a playpen versus infants that are put in a swing or put somewhere where they're not able to have free movement. And having the free movement allows them to reach these milestones at an earlier age. And finally, things like infant massage tends to speed up the rate with which infants reach these gross motor milestones. Again, infant massage doesn't need to be deep tissue. You don't need to get out the essential oils. It's simply just a very light, delicate rubbing of their muscles. Because their muscles are constantly fusing together and growing and their bones are growing, it's just giving that, that light sensitivity all over their body, rubbing their shoulders, rubbing their back. If you think about the cephalocaudal pattern of development, so helping them, you know, giving them a little chest and tummy rub and back rub when they're growing, this can actually help speed up the maturation of their muscles, help them become more aware of their muscle groups so their coordination can also speed up. 